Now that we understand the different ways of logging, let's talk about different recovery protocols. The first one, undo logging, is one of the basic recovery protocols. As we will see, undo logging does not use write ahead logging that we covered earlier, and it uses the force and steal mechanisms in terms of buffer pool management. There are four types of log records in an undo log start, commit, or abort of a transaction, and finally, an update record which states that transaction T wants to update data element X, and X previous value was V. The idea behind undo logging is as follows. We want to use the log such that when we need to recover, we will undo the effects of all the transactions that have not been committed. On the other hand, for all the transactions that have been committed, we want to leave them alone. In order to implement this behavior, we need to establish a few rules regarding how we do logging and when to flush the dirty log and data pages. Specifically, there are two rules that we go with under undo logging. The first rule says that if a transaction modifies a data element, then the corresponding update log record must be written to the disk before the dirty page containing the updated record itself is written to the disk. We want that because that would ensure the old value is recorded on the disk before the new value gets replaced permanently as the dirty page is written to the disk. The second rule states that if a transaction commits, then the pages that it modified must be written to the disk before the commit log record itself is written to the disk. That rule ensures that all changes that are made by the transaction have been written to the disk before the transaction itself commits. This is important because if we see the commit record in the log, then we will consider the transaction as committed and won't undo its changes during recovery. Therefore, we must make sure that all data changes have made to the disk before we allow the commit record to be written. Notice that this is different from write-ahead logging. Here, the dirty pages are written to the disk before writing the commit log record itself to the disk. Now notice that the first rule here implements the steal policy where 30 pages are written to the disk before a transaction commits, and the second rule implements force. Let's see an example of how this works. Suppose we have the following list of actions done by a transaction. Here, the second line fetch of A means that we read data element A from the disk into memory. And the third line here, read of A, corresponds to reading A from memory and storing it into a program variable, lowercase t. The transaction writes to both A and B as it executes, and the two flush actions at the end corresponds to writing back the modified data elements from memory back to the disk. Now suppose the database system crashed in the middle of writing back one of the dirty elements to the disk, and before writing the commit record itself. What should we do during recovery? Well, what is the right thing to do? In this case, we have a log that consists of a start entry along with two update entries, but no commit entry yet. So that means our transaction will be considered as incomplete. Remember, in undo logging, the, the idea is to undo all such incomplete transactions. So, we undo this transaction by setting B and A to be 8 on the disk. This is just like as if this transaction has not executed at all. So what about in this case, where the system crashed after the entire log, including the commit record? has been flushed to the disk. Well, in this case, we don't need to do anything because all the dirty data pages and the commit record have been written to the disk. Therefore, 
this transaction is considered as committed and from the perspective of undo logging, we don't need to do anything here during recovery. So notice that it is crucial that we write the dirty data pages to the disk before we write the commit record to the log. Why? Consider what will happen if the commit record was written to the disk before the dirty data pages are written to the disk. In that case, we would have considered this transaction to have committed even though in reality the dirty data pages actually have not made to the disk. Then during recovery, we would consider this transaction as committed and we will lose the values for A and B in this case forever, which is bad. So given an, given an undo log, when a crash happens, we have three general questions to consider. First, which of the updates do we need to undo during recovery? Well, we need to undo those from all the transactions that are uncommitted. Next question, how far back do we need to read the log from the end for recovery? Well, we need to scan the entire log from the very end to the very beginning in order to identify all uncommitted transactions. Last question, what happens if we encounter a second crash during recovery? Well, that turns out to be okay because the undo actions are actually idempotent. That means that even if we execute them again, it makes no difference. That is because as long as we still have the old value that the data elements should hold, it doesn't matter how many times we replace it with whatever that is supposed to be on the disk. And later on, we will talk about a way to fix the requirement that we need to scan the entire log for recovery. But for now, let's see how we will recover using an undo log. When the system crashes, first we run the recovery manager. We scan the log from the end to determine whether each of the transactions is completed or not. If we see both a commit and a start log record, or a start and abort record, then the answer is yes. And for the rest, where there's only a start record, they are exactly the transactions that are incomplete and need to be undone. Specifically, when we read the log from the end, there are three cases that we need to consider. First, we see a commit or an abort record. That one is easy. We simply mark the transaction as completed and we don't need to deal with it anymore. Second, if we see an update record for a transaction that has not been, up, not been completed, then we'll write back the original value to the disk. Finally, we ignore all the start transaction records. So, how far back do we need to go in the log? Turns out we need to go all the way to the beginning because we need to identify all the transactions that are incomplete. And as I said, we will fix it later on with a technique known as checkpointing. As a concrete example, consider the undo log where we crashed at the very end as shown here on the slide. During recovery, we first see the update record from transaction T2. Since that transaction is incomplete, we will write back V2 to the data element X2 on the disk. The same happens to the next transaction update record for V3. Then we see the commit record corresponding to the T5. Here we simply mark it as completed and we don't need to handle any update records from T5 if we see them later on. And the same process goes on until we have finished processing the entire log.